Thanks, Floss Tube. Hi, I'm back. It's Trisha, the left handed stitcher. I am finally doing an update. I've been trying to do this video for a few days now, and I just haven't been able to do it during the day. My you know, days just kind of go by, and by the time I get to it, I don't have the natural light anymore. Uh, and I'm a night owl. So I had to find a solution, a lighting solution, to do my videoing at night, you know, when my son's asleep. And I'm actually more active, so I think I've got it more or less figured out. It's pretty good. It's not the perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, I have a daylight lamp right in front of me, but that was too bright, too bright. So, um, and an ot light, a little desktop, older model above me. But again, that was a little too bright. So I watched some YouTube videos. A really good one from this guy named Izzy. Izzy video. He does vid he it's what is called Izzy videos. His name is Izzy Hyman. Israel Hyman. He's really good at explaining lighting concepts. So I monkeyed around with it and I had had an epiphany. Make my own sort of uh, light box. I have these things from Ikea. They're zippered bottom and they make a tray. So I put one in front of the light bot the daylight lamp and one in front of the op light. And it works well. This one was still a little bit too bright. So there's a t-shirt draped over it and it seems to be just perfect. Um, and then I have the overlight overhead lamp on so that's why you see this little glow right here because without it it was a little bit too cold and I put it on and it warms everything up so perfect and but my camera seems to do this weird dark thing every once in a while but then it brightens up after a few seconds so I might figure that out at some point but I think we'll just go with it for now because I don't know it looks pretty good um, I want to show you, I set up my video area in my craft cave because, you know, I live in a house with a child and my mother-in-law, so I, the common area out there, I'm never alone, <laughs> so, um, my desk is sitting right here, I'm on a swivelly chair, as you can see, and I made a curtain to be right behind me. I'll show you this once, just once. What's behind the curtain? There's my craft cave. Packed to the gills with storage stuff and crafting stuff. Curtains there to spare you from having to look at that all the time. <laughs> so, okay, so what? I think that's about it. The lighting seems to be working. Yay! So I can finally tape at night. Alright, let's, let's get to my finish. Here we have Autumn Harvest Sampler from Frosted Pumpkin. I actually finished this four days after. Yeah, see, darkened. I back up. It lightens up. So we'll work with that. I finished this four days after part two came out. I haven't washed it yet, so it still has the pen, the marking pen grid lines in it. But I went to Joann's recently, so that's part of my haul. And I'll show you. I got my fabric because I'm going to do a wall hanging with this. And look at that. How does that look? Yep. 
Doo -doo. I was so happy to find this fabric. It just, it went so well. So well with it. And then the red coordinates. So, hopefully that my sewing skills are fairly decent. Fairly decent. They're not, they're not excellent, but they're decent. I think I can manage this. So we'll see how, see how that turns out. Oh, put that down. My first whip update is my American flag. Yep, I got some more done. And it's at the point where I had to take it out of the frame to move it. I figured this was a perfect time to do a full show you the full thing. Um, as you can tell, I filled in this red stripe. Um, I did the whites down here and a little bit more white here. Um, yeah, it's looking really good. This, this section of red right here took forever. It just went on and on and on. <laughs> Excuse me. It just kept going. <laughs> Uh, but I, th I got that done. Yep. So now I'm on to the other half of it. And I did manage to get a picture of it on my tablet to show you. And there's the photo that it was charted from. She doesn't actually have a picture of a stitched example. So this is what I have to go off of. So, yeah, um, this is my on-the-go project. It gets worked on when I'm at the doctor's, whether it's my appointment or my mother-in-law's appointment, because she doesn't drive. I have to drive her all the time. When I'm waiting at the bus stop for my child. And any other time, I'm sitting and waiting. And I take it with me and I stitch on it. It works out well. Alright, so my next whip is the lighthouse. So you can see I got I got this lighter color stitched in and it's looking good. I got all the French knots done for the sea spray. Which uh, I I don't have a problem with French knots, so that was really easy for me. I actually went very quickly. And then the straight stitches for the fence posts. Get up close, you can see that. Yep. And then the border pattern. It's pretty cool. If you look at it, if you look at, at the top peak, it kind of looks like waves. If you look at the bottom rounded part, it looks like fish scales. So that's actually pretty cool. But I... I severely underestimated how long it's going to take me to do this border. I figured it would just take me a few days. I'm working on it and working on it. Hours and hours. And, <laughs> and the floss. I'm on skein 2 right now. So it ate up a whole skein. And I'm... Last night I did... A few rows here, and I did pretty much this right here. I'm down to the point now where I can scroll down to the bottom part and finish it. So I'm close, very close. All right, let me second a tick trick. My new start actually comes off of the Just Cross Stitch compilation collection 1991 to 2000. It's from the 1997 October issue. I have pictures here to show you. 
do landscape. No, it doesn't get it all. Alright, but this is basically it. It's called the Big Woods Bell Pull. It's a sampler style. And I'll... And there's... There's the bottom half of it. Um, when I saw it, it, it really caught my eye. Oh, that's weird. Get rid of that. Really caught my eye. I think because of this border. Oh, there's the whole thing. That band of road stitches right there. I loved it. It just it appealed to me so much, and the woodsy theme of the whole thing was very. I loved it. But the problem being, I'm not a big fan of alphabet samplers. I understand, I understand the concept, the tradition behind the alphabet samplers, but I just, I don't like, I don't like the way they, I just don't like them. Personal preference. But then I looked at it a little closer and I realized I could alter the pattern. Remove the alphabet very easily because it's done in bands. My only problem, let me see if I can get back to the bottom part. <sighs> Taking the alphabet out of this band right here, that'd leave it really, really thin. Didn't like that. And then moving the XY from between the raccoons the weird space there. So I realized I could combine the two. So what I did is I used my homemade graph paper that I make from Excel and I charted it out removing the alphabet and combining the raccoons and the fish. And you see here, there's just little simple fish shapes because I had to work on turning the fish vertical rather than horizontal. And then I alternated them. So that took a little bit of figuring. And working off that pattern, it's not the best best image of the magazine. The fractional stitches couldn't really tell what they were so I had to make my best guess. Looking at the pattern and looking at the stitched example I had to make my best guess for that. And I did. So, show you how far I've gotten. I, I'm loving, I'm loving this thing. It looks awesome in real life. Not, maybe not quite so much here, but yeah, I, I'm loving doing these road stitches for this mosaic band and the partial eyelet for the trees was awesome. The roof was made from Smyrna stitches. There's some Algerian eyelets right along the side of the cabin. And then the cabin logs are a satin stitch. So I can get it up real close. You can see. You can see. Yeah. Okay. So I'm up to working on this band. And then it's the raccoons, fish, and one more band of road stitches, and I'm done. So I've been so enjoying this thing. I'm loving it. Because the special stitches have been a blast to do. And the colors, I'm loving it. And the woodsy theme. So, so me. There's that. And of course, I'm 
I'm not going to show the innocent guardian angel because I just I'm not I can't work on it. Not till the summer, and then I get. Hopefully, I can finish it. Yeah. All right. So next, let's move on to to my haul. This is actually several things. A trip to Joann's. An order from One Two Three Stitch. Um, I ordered from Stitch and Bits and Bobs. I ordered from. Uh, Stitch and Frog, too. So first things. Actually, I ordered this thing off of Amazon a couple of months ago. I finally got around to loading my beads into it. I love it. Um, let's see. I had beads from a previous project that didn't happen. You know, like I said, I was going to talk about that later, so maybe that will be part of my random babbling and then I got more beads for some of my upcoming projects so I've put them in and I labeled the tops because it didn't make sense to me that I couldn't see the labels when they were in the case you know so I'm searching for a color or a number so I got my label maker out and I took care of that by making my little labels and put them on I'm loving it. So, there's that. My beads. Oh. Let's see, I will show you my my favorite color. Nope, that wasn't it. Here it is. Citron. Citron. This limey green. Yeah, these are in my Mirabilia pattern. I love that color. Oh. Alright, so on the labels, I put the number and the color, and then on the top is the number. Just a little one in the corner to make it easier for me to find what I'm looking for. Uh, I really, not without pulling out my, I don't, I probably don't have it with me, the packing list, I can't really show you which ones came in my haul and which ones I already had, and I don't think I really need to show you every single one I've got. Let's go on to haul stuff. Well, let me show you my Mirabilia finally came in. I'm doing the Emerald Mermaid. So some of the beads were for her. Fabric. This is the fabric that it calls for. I'm not sure I like it. I did a floss toss. Not really quite sure about it, so I placed an order with Picture This Plus. Took a while because you know they were still working on their Christmas in July sale, and I ordered one called Nocturne. Here it is. I'm not sure I like it. I don't, I'm not sure I like how splotchy it is. I think I'd like something a little bit more, you know, mottled as opposed to splotchy. But I'll have to do a floss toss on this and see if I like it. So I'm still searching for the fabric for the Mirabilia. Who knows? I might just, I might just go with. With the fabric it calls for. It's a it's 32 count Hochelt Stony Point. There it is. Yep. The picture, it's more gray than green. 
So I don't know how the green floss is going to work on the green fabric. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. So there's that. Put you down there. Next thing is, okay, so Mirabilia, upcoming. More soon upcoming is the Frosted Pumpkin Christmas Celebration. Stitch along. Here's the fabric for it. That it called. It's the Gingerbread Crystal. It's a I got a 32 count Lugana from Picture This Plus. Look at the sparklies. So they released the first pattern, first part of the pattern, two days ago, I think. It was on the 14th. So I have, I have all the stuff printed out that I need. Um, I think I just haven't felt like gridding. So that's why I haven't started yet, because I grid. I always grid. And because it's even weave and not Ada, I gotta do the easy count grid line. Or, you know, basic fish line in this instead of using the pen. Because you just can't get a pen that fine. I mean, even the fine point. Just. <laughs> I can't get it that fine. So maybe in a day, maybe tomorrow, nope, tomorrow, tomorrow i got to run down to, i run my mother-in-law down El Paso, because she's, she's old, and it's turned kind of chilly here, it's not bad, I mean, we're in New Mexico, I'm loving it, it's perfect weather for me, but she's constantly cold. I think she didn't bring her real, really heavy winter coats with her because she thought she was moving to the desert. It was never going to get cold. Surprise! So I'm driving her down to Macy's because she likes shopping there. And hopefully we can find a good coat for her there. If not, we'll be driving up to Rio Doso which is more mountainous. It's a lot colder up in Rio Doso than it is down here in the Tularosa Basin. So people say that the stores up there have a lot more cold weather gear. So that might be a trip if El Paso doesn't work out, but yeah, tomorrow I gotta, I gotta drive her down El Paso, so this won't be happening tomorrow, so maybe the next day. I'll get to my grid and, and then then I can start stitching. So, there's that. Uh, the next, next right on the cusp project is the Passione Ricomo Under the Moonlight Stitch Along, which I signed up for. They released part two today. And um, part one and two, pretty easy. Not a, not a buttload of stitching on it, so it should be easy for me to catch up once I get my fabric. I ordered fabric from Silk Weavers, and they're taking their sweet time getting it to me. So hopefully it gets here soon so I can get it gritted and start stitching and get it, get that started. Alright, um, let's see. What should I do next? Well, the third fabric that I ordered from Picture This Plus is their uh, 28 count Lugana Tycho. T-Y-C-H-O I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure I'm satisfied with this one. I gotta do a floss toss 
is the one that, that the pattern calls for. But I'm not seeing hardly any variation in this. There's supposed to be a, a subtle gray tone variation and I'm just not seeing it. I'll have to put it, I'll have to get it out in some natural natural sunlight and see and do a floss toss. We'll see. But it was ordered for Elizabeth. I saw Jessie Marie pull this pattern out. She picked it for her to do in memory of her grandmother. And I fell in love with it. Now, just the picture, it, you know, you can't tell. The picture itself is cool. I like it. But you get the pattern, you, you read the, you read the materials list. You look a little closer. I don't know if you can even see it on the picture. This thing is sparkly. Oh my lord, the sparkly in it. So this was a big part of my haul from from the online shopping. And I'm planning on starting this maybe one May. Um, maybe Jessie Marie or whoever else wants to join me because Glendon Place has this is a series, there's like three others, but this was this was my favorite. Mayflowers! That's why I'm picking May for this one. And that should give me enough time to make get get started, you know, get a good progress on my other two stitch longs and get my whips. My, my current whips. Pretty well done. Lighthouse done. My flag is my on-the-go stitch, so I'm not really in a hurry. Not really in a hurry, however long that takes me, it takes me. So, and my woodland thing. Oh, that's going to be, that's not going to take me much longer. So, yeah. Mayflowers. So, let me know if anybody's interested. That, and another. I ordered this off Amazon. I decided I wanted to do a... Christmas stock, stocking for my son. And I had looked through a bunch of patterns, a bunch, bunch of kits, and I couldn't quite find the right one. It just didn't have the right feel until I came across this little guy. He's so cute! Look at that! The little polar bears and the cardinals. <laughs> I love it. But since, you know, it's not like I'm going to get it done this Christmas. Yeah, so I'm not in any real hurry to start this. We'll see how my stitching goes. But yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Oh, what's left in my haul? Okay, so like I said, sparklies. I got, I got a lot, some beads. The beads are for the Mirabilia. There's some beads in my stash now for the Passione Orcomo under the moonlight. And beads and crystal treasures for Elizabeth. I told you, <laughs> it's a sparkly project. Alright, so I have petite treasure braids for the Passione Orcomo. The ones that the pattern calls for is PB12, PB204, PB09, PB205, PB20, PB72, and PB22. There's that. And Krennic. Some of this is for the Mirabilia. 
and a lot of it is for for Elizabeth. Very sparkly. Alright, so I have three, two, two, eight. It's a pretty gold color. Zero one five. It's pretty light green. I got zero zero nine. Oh, is that gonna focus? Uh, dark green. And nine two nine four. It's iridescent kind of purpley. Holographic is what that is called. And the other ones, oop, wait, one more, one more color. Because I have I have multiples of some of these colors, like I said. Elizabeth is sparkly. Here's 024. Pretty pink. Yeah. So a lot of credit right here. Next thing. Well, part of my Joanne's haul was my biannual floss by DMC. This one was not nearly as large as my past ones because I pretty well got my stash stocked. This was just filling in a few gaps. So, my floss, I have to get this in, put into my system. Uh, let's see, at Joann's and Hobby Lobby. Let's have to Hobby Lobby too. I got me some some buttons. See, there's that one. Pretty in black and in grayish blue. Very nice. A nice filigree. Looks, yeah, it's got like a snowflake motif on it. Love it. There's this one. It's nice. And I found this charm. Nice butterfly. It's got a little ring at the top that I don't think I'm gonna. I'm not gonna remove it. I might, when my husband gets back, I might let him take that off and he'll have to file it down so there's, there's no sharp edge, but. There's that one, and then this one. Loved it. Be weird. Perfect. And then the other one on this. I love nerds. Actually, I love geeks. I love geeks. Nerds. Hmm. But geeks, yes. Because I am a geek. I am. I'm not. I'm not a big geek, but I definitely am a geek. I got these because I want to make my own needle minders. Let's see, my needle minder collection at this point is this one. And let's see. Let's get these back up here. There's that one. I got these two from Etsy shop. It's called O oh Needle Mind, kind of like O oh Never Mind. I liked her stuff, so I got two from her. Very cute. And then I went on Etsy again. I ordered my. Well, I'll tell you that in a minute. I ordered somebody some needle minders, and then I also picked up this one. Just a basic, pretty little pink flower. So that's my collection of needle minders right now. If I make my own from the buttons I got, I I went on Amazon. I found the strong rare earth magnets pack of a hundred of them for like $17 which so beats paying like 
like six dollars for two of them at Hobby Lobby. So, um, I think I'll try if you, somebody will probably be interested. So I'll see if I can uh, set up a link in the description box for these. They come in a little styrofoam inside of this box so that they don't adhere themselves to the nearest metal object. And uh, at the same time I ordered those were half inch, half inch ones and they're one sixteenth inch um, depth which is the same the same as what's on these guys you know they're pretty thin and they're about a half inch and you guys know how these things are they're like really strong um, I ordered quarter inch ones in case I found some buttons that just didn't, or some doodads that just didn't have enough service space on them. So I got these. I actually ordered two packages of the half inch because from reading the reviews people are finding all sorts of uses for them. So I think, yeah, I don't want to get this too close to the camera because <laughs> these things are strong. <laughs> Um, people are finding all sorts of uses for them. Like someone was saying that they they put them on the backs of their spice jars so they could use it on a on a metal board to put them up on the wall, and uh, cos cosmetics jars, magnet board in in the bathroom, so they're all displayed up on the wall. It seemed like a pretty nice idea. So, I got these. I was so happy to find these on Amazon for a good price. It made it so much easier than trying to go to Hobby Lobby and use a 40% coupon to get the package of two every time I needed, wanted to do one. So, perfect. Got those. And... I have E6000, so when I when I get the mojo to do it sometime in the next week or so, I will be making some more needle miters for myself. Right. Okay, oh, one more finished object that I promised to show you. My popcorn garland. Oh, isn't that cute? That was so cute. I made a mock-up to see. Yeah, I tried. I tried doing three beads in between. I tried doing four beads in between, and I figured out five beads is just the perfect length. And tontos look like cranberries. Oh, that's so cool. I used jump rings from my husband's craft stash. He does chainmail jewelry, so use that. I started out using um, fishing line, but I wasn't having much luck with fishing line. It it was tough for me to tie, and it kind of had a stretch to it. So even though I tried to get a good tight string, it just kept stretching. So I switch to I have this red string on a spool tried that and it worked perfect because even when these things gap a little bit you really don't see it perfect my plan is um, I probably don't have enough of these little popcorn things um, I used up an entire skein but I don't think I'm going to have enough, so I have a whole another skin to work with. We, when we get the tree up after Thanksgiving, I will be 
tailor making these strands to fit around the tree. Um, so each level will be a different length. And that's what I'm going to do. That's why I only have one strand made because I just don't know the lengths I need. But I'm loving it. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, one thing I promised to show you last time. Get my, wake up my tablet and see if I can get to it. Maybe this way. There we go. The Minecraft Diamond Sword Cake or more specifically Rice Krispie Bar Cake for my son's birthday. It turned out awesome. It turned out big. <laughs> I did one inch, no, one, one and a half inch squares made out of gum paste. Pre-made so that they kind of hardened into tiles, which made it so easy to arrange them on top of the Rice Krispie bar, you know, the large, I did a large pan, I did actually two large pans of it, arranged them on there and then trimmed down, wow, going dark, Ooh, closer, um, trim around it to the shape of this tiles, and he loved it, it was so good, and Rice Krispies, we ate them all. There nothing went to waste. So, and it was funny. My, my son ate one of the tiles and his his mouth, teeth, tongue were just blue. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, but yeah, he loved it. He loved it. And I'm happy with how it turned out. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting what next year I set the bar so high for myself the first year I made a cake for him. I asked him what he wanted. He said Spider-Man. So I did a Spider-Man face. It turned out really well, but getting that frosting, I was doing buttercream frosting because I hadn't yet worked with uh, gum paste or fondant. Didn't quite know how and I didn't want to didn't want to mess with it right then and there. <laughs> so I did buttercream and getting that red deep enough was a chore. <laughs> well, I mean, I was using Wilton's gum paste. I hadn't I hadn't learned yet about Americolor, you know. But it turned out really well. The next year I asked him what he wanted, he said, Batman. So I showed him a cake with Batman. It was just the symbol, you know, like the belt symbol of Batman, because that was going to be pretty easy. And he's like, no, no, I want Batman. I'm like, ah. Oh. So I did a lot of searching on Google Images to find, find a pattern. And it ended up, I ended up getting one of the 1980s Wilton cake pans. I had to get it off of eBay. And then for the first time in my life, I did the little stars, hundreds of little stars. But it turned out really well. It turned out really well. So, again, I set the bar high for myself. So each year I, I let him pick what he wants and then I do my damnedest to make it happen. <laughs> uh, so we'll see what... I'll, I'll pull up pictures of the past two years for the next video and show you. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting what he wants next year. Alright, so the next stitchy thing Okay, well, the next history thing I'll talk about is my 
failed attempt at my first stitch along. Not really a failure. I mean, maybe I no, I didn't bring it. I should have grabbed it. Maybe I'll. Mm, I don't want to go get it now. I don't want to stop the video. Yeah, I'll stop the video. I'll go get it. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm I'm back. Uh, okay, so I saw. Well, she mentioned it in one of her videos. I think it was Jessie Marie that she was gonna do the Passione Ricomo 20 year mystery sal, and I was intrigued. You know, I was looking for a stitch along to do, so I went to the Passione Ricomo website and I looked at her patterns and they're beautiful you know I really liked them so I signed up for the 20 year sale um, it is a huge piece and had I decided to continue stitching on it I really wouldn't had a would not have had a problem with it um, but I got this far, this far, and I gritted uh, about, I was about 75% gritted on this. I used some really fine, really fine, I don't know, if, I can barely see it, can you see it? Four pound test. Real thin. But really good color in this fishing line. And I wanted to try. Try using a thin fishing line instead of the easy count because I was worried that on a real fine um, even weave that the easy count was going to distort some of the holes too much. Um, but since then I've I've uh, I've done a project on a 28 count Lugana, I think it was, using Easy Count, and when I took the Easy Count out, yeah, you could see some of the holes were a little distorted where it came out, but when I washed the project, they and ironed it, they disappeared, so no no problem no problem there, so I don't think I'll be using the fine fishing line again. Cause it was, it was, it was a pain to work with. Cause it's so fine. Um, I, I have it in working in my head. Gears are turning to do a gritting tutorial. Um, so hopefully I can get that on film soon. And get that out there. So, but anyways, I was stitching on this. I got this far, and I had fallen a little bit behind, you know, because of gritting this took forever. So I got, I got a late start, and then I had, I had a, I had an, uh, what do I want to call it, an event, let's say, that stalled me. Uh, the first, the first pattern that was sent out, the pattern was the grid lines, because of course I grid. The grid lines were set up with, I think, zero in the center, going outward, both directions. Step two came out, and the pattern had changed. The grid lines had changed. Now it was starting zero at one edge, one corner, and going all the way across. It was that, either vice versa. But anyways, the difference between the two meant that the grid lines were offset by five lines in both directions, up and down, side to side. And I was 
pissed. I was so mad. Um, you know, I vented on the Facebook site. And while most people, most people were, were kind about it, I got a few people who were like, well, what's the big deal? Well, obviously you don't grid. If you gridded, you would understand what the deal is. Um, but I got past that. I figured out a workaround. You know, I print out the patterns, and then I just went in with a, a red Sharpie, and I made my own grid lines. Easy, easy fix. I mean, it was going to be a little bit extra work, but it was an easy fix. I got past that. But then... I got to see as the pattern developed a few more a few more steps had been released and I started to see see the pattern kind of the overall feel of it and I had a moment of clarity the I was like if I spend all this time stitching on it am I going to want to hang it on my wall and by looking at how it was starting to shape up, I decided it wasn't the right pattern for me. I really didn't care for it. Um, it made sense. It made sense for her to have all those little vignettes of her previous patterns in there. You know, for a 20 year stitch, 20 year anniversary stitch along, it made sense. But it wasn't something that I really felt I needed to stitch. So, I abandoned the project. I just, you know, I don't have any regrets. No, not really. I abandoned it, and now I have this huge piece um, that I'm going to unpick what I stitched. It's already gridded. Most of it, 75% of it's already gridded. So, I will definitely find something else to stitch on this. Uh, so... But now, she she opened up another stitch along called Under the Moonlight. And um, I signed up because I was like, you know what? I wanted to make another, I want to try again. I want to make another go at it because her patterns are quite beautiful. And like I said, I'm waiting on the fabric to start. They really stepped to today. So, I'm a little behind, but no biggie. No biggie. I'll, I'll catch up. Um, once I get my fabric and I get it gritted and I get started. Um, but the first, the first step when it came out has this little synopsis in the front, in the page one, that gives you a little story and a clue to what is going to be in the picture and I am thrilled. I am thrilled. I uh, I am just yay. It's something I want. <laughs> so yay. I get to stitch it and but again wait for the fabric for it to come in. I ordered a really dark dark blue fabric from Silk Weavers. So I got I got an email saying it was shipped. But just like people have been saying on websites or in forums, I go to USPS tracking, I put in the number and it says, "Yeah, we received the shipping information from from the shipper, but we don't actually have the package yet." Not in our system. So, we'll see how long that takes. Huh. Alright, so the next thing, I'm gonna get a drink real quick. Next thing, September 9th. I wrote it down. September 9th. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm cross-stitching. My husband's sitting on his side of the couch. And I think he was watching some TV. 
and or he might have been gaming, who knows. But he turns to me and he goes, you know, I think I'd like to try that. And I was like, inside I'm going, yay! <laughs> but, you know, I stayed calm. I stayed calm. And I said, I would be very happy to teach you. So, a couple nights later, I got some Ada fabric out of my stash. I put it, put a piece in, my, in the 8-inch Q-snap for him. And I put a piece in... 6 inch Q-snap for myself, you know, so I can stitch and show him, you know. So, here is his first stitching. Look at that. He did, he did some lines at first. The first time he went across, he didn't understand, you know, where you put the needle. You know, so he, that's how he did the, every other one, but then he realized his mistake and started doing you know, continuous stitches. So he did that, and then he did a little block. He did his J for his name. And then he doodled the little storm cloud with the lightning. He, he found this online. It's, it was actually a poster um, for Big Bang Theory. You know, rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. <laughs> but it was, it was, you know, digitized big square so it translated really well. I charted that out and he did the, the lizard and then we found this little pattern for Skyrim. He did that. And it was good. Good little practice for him. He learned how to maneuver around a pattern. Um, I drew up some examples on my graph paper and I taught him my techniques for how to maneuver you know around the pattern. Um, and how I've developed, you know, my techniques. And so I, I showed him using the graph paper because it was a lot quicker and easier, you know, than, than actual stitching. And he understood. He got it. He could see what I was talking about. So that was good practical practice for him. So then once he, once he did this and he, uh, he, liked doing it. He was happy and wanted to continue. Oh, let me show you real quick. My doodle. I stitched, well, I showed him at first, you know, why I didn't. Okay, so I started stitching on the top. And then I showed him why I didn't like doing that because when, when you need to end your thread and get under there, if you're close to the edge, that's kind of difficult getting the needle at the right angle. Um, so I turned it around, I started stitching on this side to show him, yeah, when I need to end my thread, yeah, it's real easy to get the right angle because it's a flat plane. And I, I love stitching in the well. It, it's just, it works so much easier and it's, um, it's just a better practice because, like, if you drop your piece down on the ground, the front of your fabric is not going to touch. So, I learned this a few, well, some years ago, and I've been doing it ever since, stitching in the wall. Yep, and my little pumpkin doodle. He's so cute. <laughs> so, uh, when, when he wanted to continue with it, I, I went on College Factory, and I picked a couple, a few patterns that I thought he'd like to do. And I showed them to him, and he really liked the the Firefly one, which was not surprising because we love Firefly. So he said, "Yeah, I want to do that one." So I I ordered it, and I well I printed it, and I also um, it was a PDF, so I put it in Dropbox. And he he also he also has a tablet now. I got this guy about a month and a half, two months ago, because I wanted to try stitching from it. And, um, well, I haven't done it yet because I haven't gotten the right pattern to work off of on this 
um, when I bought my tablet, he had to buy a tablet too. It's the way it seems to go in my household. He buys a new gadget, ah, uh, I don't get one, I don't, you know, I might not be ready for it. You know, he bought a Nook, it took me two years to buy my Nook. He got a, he got a smartphone, I'm still on my old Razor with the text keyboard and that's it. I'm happy with it because our Verizon bill went up so much with his smartphone I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready to move it any higher than it already is. But so he has a tablet too so I just I, I put it on Dropbox and I gave him access to that folder so he has it um, he has it on his tablet to work from, which he's doing, he's doing pretty good working from it. It's he likes it. So let me get out of, out of that. Show you. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still learning. Um, I don't know. This is helping me. We got a new desktop. Our old des desktop. I mean, we have laptops we work on when we're sitting at the table or on the sofa but the desktop sits on the the desk you know with the printer hooked to it our old one was just too old um, I got an update for a program that tried to load it on that desktop the old one and it just said nope I am too damn old <laughs> I'm not gonna work with this new program so it was time. It was time we got a new desktop. Um, but of course, it came with Windows 8. I'm not liking Windows 8 at all. You know, I'm a geek and I'm having trouble. <laughs> so this helped a little bit, you know, learning how to use this guy. And let me see if I can. Brain, brain, work, Dropbox. Oh, I just pulled up that picture again. I'll have to do that later. I'll have to do that later. I was going to show you... Well, if you don't mind me monkeying with this for a second, I might be able to figure this out. Yeah, okay, so I have to go to my... The things that are already open and stop that program from being there okay so then now when I open my Dropbox I can get yeah I can get alright so there's the Firefly pattern in there I also Graft. Come on. This little guy. I'm calling this the Kilroy Kitty. Because it's, you know, like Kilroy from the World War thing. Peeking over the the plane of some sort. And it's a cute little kitty. So I, I charted this up for him. And I, I included a uh, package of Ada and the threads that he would need to do that in his package. So then, let me see if I can... Oh, okay. I'd put another one in there for him. He probably won't get to it, but I gave him a few options of things to stitch. Um, so he, he'd started this, uh, the firefly pattern before he left. And so now he's got something to work on while he's gone. Um, I'll tell you, he's gone right now. Um, he got a contract um, to work down in Antarctica. And he's there now. It's a, a six month contract, but he, he ended up leaving a little bit later. Uh, 
they said he was going to leave one October, but it ended up they moved his leave date to the 23rd of October, which was awesome because he was home for Alex's birthday. Um, but his return date is the same as it was before, so he's it's probably like a five month contract now. Um, so he's he's down there, down in Antarctica. He he got the opportunity. And we talked about it, and I said, go, go. Because he he always wanted to go down there. He'd had an opportunity while he was in the military, but he'd passed it up because he just got back from another TDY, and he was like, I don't, I don't really feel like turning around and going straight to another one right now. And he regretted it. So now that this opportunity came up, and... I said, go. I said, but you realize, I, I'm happy for you, but I am jealous too. Because <laughs> I really want to go. I really want to go too. And we can't both go at the same time, because we have a kid. And Grandma doesn't drive. So, I told him, hey, you go this time, it's my turn next time. Or, in the very least, you know, he's there over their summer, which is our winter. Said, hey, if they need somebody, an IT person for their winter over, let them know. I'm available. So, that's why, you know, he's, he took the cross-stitching with him. He was, he was doing pretty good. By the time he left, he'd, he'd gotten two of the figures done. And so, we'll see. He was enjoying it. So I think he's going to continue. And I am, I'm so happy. Because <laughs> now, now when I talk about my cross stitch, he can understand. It's awesome. I mean, he, he understood the crafting. Because he's crafty too. Um, before he's picked up the cross stitch, he did a lot of... Uh, chain mail work, you know, doing the different configurations of the chain mail rings. He made some jewelry and some other things. Uh, let's see if I can pull if I can pull this down off of here real quick. Should be easy. He sent this to me when I was deployed to Iraq. And these pretty little flowers made from the chainmail rings and the dragon scales. Look at those. Aren't they cute? He did that and he he was doing um, a lot of well he does. He's, he's one of his passions. Um, parachute cord weaving. He's made bracelets. He's made hat bands, he's made belts, he's made monkey balls, um, he's made netting bags, he's done wraps for his um, walking stick. Uh, he does a lot of that and he also works with leather work. He makes things out, he makes things out, of out of his leather and he was learning how to do the stamping uh, on the leather. Um, the embossing of it. So he's crafty. He is. But now that he's actually stitching, he'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. It's awesome. That made me very happy that he was going to do that. Alright. So, hmm, the next bit of rambly stuff. Let's see. Ooh. When I watched my previous video, I noticed I look like I was looking over your shoulder the whole time. <laughs> and the reason for that is I'm recording with my camcorder and the LCD screen is right to the side of it. And I have the LCD screen flipped towards me so that when I'm showing something I can make sure it's in frame. But the downside of that is, yeah, I can speak to 
the camera lens for a few seconds, but then my eye always goes right back to the LCD screen. I tried doing some practice takes. Tried talking to the damn camera instead of the LCD, but it's just not working. Not working. So, I decided, you know what, it's just, we're just going to roll with it. Um, because... I know when I'm watching Floss Tube, I'm usually stitching or gaming. And when people are talking, you know, you generally you don't look at it. You don't look at it. You're doing what you're doing. And then when they say, "Hey, I'm gonna show you something," that's when you look. So I'm just gonna go with me talking to the LCD instead of the camera, because. Yeah, that's just the way I roll. <laughs> Alright. Another bit of rambly. Okay. You see... My tablet cover. Pink. And my fingernails are pink. Okay, bubblegum pink. They're a little bit pinker than I normally have them. Because I went and got a manicure. And it was at the beauty school. They didn't have a very big selection of polish, so this is about the only thing that I could I could go with. Yeah. Bright bubblegum pink, and my drink cup is pink. I love pink. I didn't always love pink. It wasn't. I mean, prior to about two and a half years ago, I had a real, real, well, it's halfway between dislike and amb ambivalence of pink. Because I was never really girly, and then being in the military, they don't really give you a whole lot of wiggle room to be girly. And that didn't really bother me, since I'm not. I'm not curly. Uh, but, hmm. when I was preparing to retire, because in the military you, um, you, you submit your paperwork for retirement, and you can do it anywhere from, I think, 30 days to one year out. And so I submitted my paperwork a year out. Um, so I had a whole year of working active duty when I knew I was going to be civilian within within a year. And, you know, I think, started to think. You know, started to think, you know, well, once I'm out, what kind of person, what kind of person do I want to be? Because I'll be able to be whatever I wanted to be, not what they wanted me to be. And I don't really know why, but all of a sudden, pink just started to really appeal to me. It grew on me, and now I love it. I love, I love, love, love the color pink. It's been two and a half years now, and it hasn't faded, so this is part of my personality now. Pink. Love it. So I think, I think that's about all I wanted to talk about tonight. And I talked about the lighting and the fact that I always look over your shoulder. Showed you all my projects and my hauls. So I think we're done. I think we're done. So anyways, I want to say that I love I love being a part. I love being a part of... Let's see if we can get that, get that to brighten back up. I love, love, love being a part of this community. You guys are awesome. Awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you everybody. And... I'll see you next time. Happy stitching. Bye! Mm -hmm.